in here with me. I'm okay, slacking. we're on. Yep. We're on. So we'll do that. Let's get this. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Community Church at Cedar Springs Adult Sunday School. Uh, if this is your first time here, we welcome you. Uh, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, we do have moderators in the stream. So if you have questions or would like to comment on our lesson tonight, please do so. And uh, they will either get your question to us and we'll talk about it, or they will uh, answer it for you. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, our, our Zoom room is listed in the description below. We would love to have you come and join us live and be part of our discussion on Sunday nights at 6 p.m. and Wednesday nights at 6.30 p.m. Uh, you can also follow us on Facebook. And uh, if you would like to, uh, if you have a prayer request or would like to speak to a minister, there's a contact link there as well. Uh, you can contact us and someone will get back to you uh, with that. Tonight we're continuing uh, in our Sunday School book, uh, Jesus uh, the Servant. And tonight we're going to be looking at how to pray. Uh, as uh, Jesus talks to disciples and uh, to teach them how to pray and how we should pray. Uh, but before we get started with that, uh, join with me and let's open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the opportunity that you've afforded us to be able to gather together in, in such a way that we can uh, grow closer to you as we uh, learn from each other. Lord, I pray that every person who is watching this, wherever they are, that your spirit will descend upon them, that you will bless them in the study that they are putting forth, Lord, that you will strengthen their resolve, that you will increase their faith, and Lord, just draw them closer to you. Lord, I pray for those who intended to be here tonight who couldn't make it. I pray that wherever they are, or whatever situation they have found themselves in, that you are there with them, giving them whatever they stand in need of. Lord, we just pray that as we go through our discussion tonight and, and we delve into your word, that you will reveal yourself to us in a way that will uh, draw us closer to you. Lord, we love you, we praise and worship you, and we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So tonight, Amen. Uh, you know, going over this, I'm going to do a little bit different or go outside the, the curriculum just a little bit. And... Uh, we were talking, or like I said, the lesson is Jesus teaches the disciple or teaches about prayer. And the uh, if you had your books or if you looked at it, the first uh, scripture ref or that they looked at was Luke 11, verses 1 through 4. I don't know exactly why they chose that particular uh, passage of scripture since we were just in Matthew 6 uh, two weeks ago. Uh, so I am I, tonight. I I would rather us look at uh, Matthew chapter six verses nine through thirteen uh, in that first section of our book. Uh, there's a uh, to me I think there's an important addition in Matthew six that's not in Luke uh, that uh, that we should discuss. And, and with that being said, so that's going to be the only difference in our lesson tonight. If you're following along, if you have your own Sunday school book to do that. Uh, if you'd like a Sunday school book, uh, contact our moderator in Facebook Live or drop us a note in our contact page. And let us know and we will get you a Sunday school book. But as we get started here, when we're talking about prayer in the beginning of the lesson, I, I like the analogy that they use or they're talking about watching uh, a toddler as they learn to speak. And it goes from... Uh, as the child is growing up, it's just, it starts off, it's just babbling, uh, incoherent uh, sounds uh, that change into words, uh, then groupings of words, uh, and then full, full on sentences in just a very short time. And, and the author of this uh, relates that to our prayer life. Uh, that when we are, when we first accept Christ into our lives and we begin to pray, or when we begin to pray before that, uh, that it, it's almost inco incomprehensible babble. Uh, but the more that we do it, the more that we uh, surrender to the Holy Spirit, uh, the more we are able to form our thoughts together to uh, offer up uh, prayer. 
And so I kind of like that, and I, I kind of agree uh, with that. And we have to remember, too, in, in this cultural setting that we're, we're looking about in, in the Jewish culture, prayer was not really part of their uh, religious practice. Uh, they would go to the synagogue to learn about scripture. They would go to the temple uh, to have forgiveness of their sins, but they would uh, offer up their, their sins or their, their confessions to the priests of the temple and the priests would pray for them. So there was still almost a, a disconnect between uh, the Jewish people and their God or, or our God in, in that way. And, and so what we find in Matthew 6 is the disciples are with Jesus and he tells them, well, let's look at what he tells them. So Matthew uh, chapter 6, verses 9 through uh, 13, I'm reading from the Christian Standard uh Bible here. But it says, and this is Jesus talking, it says, therefore you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name is honored and holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation but deliver us from the evil one. And of course, uh, to, to Christians, uh, I'm sure that's a very familiar passage. Uh, you know, that was one, of, that was probably the first, to my memory, uh, scriptural passage that I memorized. And, and I say that because we used to recite this prayer uh, before lunch every day when I was in second grade, uh, which you won't find that in, in schools today. But uh, for us, uh, it wasn't a question of whether or not we believed. Uh, that's what we did before uh, we would go to lunch as our teacher would have us. We would say the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and we we do this. The, the part in this that is not found in Luke is found in verse 10. Uh, in, in Luke, it just says your kingdom come, and then it goes straight to give us today our daily bread. It, it leaves out your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, which, and the reason I picked this is because in the Sunday school lesson, they allude to that part of the prayer and, and us wishing that God's will be done here on earth as it is in heaven, but it's not mentioned in Luke. So that kind of confused me when I was doing the lesson why they would bring that, I know why they brought it up, but why they would bring, why would they would choose that particular passage when they're wanting to talk about that particular will of God on earth in Matthew. So that's one of the reasons why I picked this. Uh, so let's break this down just a little bit. And, and the first part is, and, and we may end up spending the entire night on this, I, I apologize. Uh, we'll, we'll see how the discussion goes. Uh, but I, I think this is important. This is Jesus's model for us on how to communicate with God. So let, let's talk about this for a little bit. What, why do we pray? What, what is the purpose of prayer? Anybody want to give an answer for that or, or discuss what, why we pray? Prayer is our communication with, with our Heavenly Father, and it should be both directions, not just us asking Him or telling Him what we need. We should also spend time listening to Him, because that's the way conversation goes, is in both directions. Tony Davis says prayer is earthly permission for heavenly intervention. Who says there you go. That? Tony Evans. And that's true. And you made a really good point in that, Hilda, too, is a lot of times we're, we're so concerned about lifting our concerns up to him that we don't wait for his answer. We don't wait for his reply uh, in our prayers. we we'll give him a chance to talk back in, in those kind of things, too. So he talks to us in our prayers as well if we will take the time to listen in that. But the first part of this that, that I think is very important 
is our Father in heaven. And, and I say that for us, I think, in our in this particular discussion or in this group that's that's here right now, uh, I, I don't know what your your fathers were like, but we had fathers in our lives. I know Charles's father. Uh, I don't know Hilda's Hilda or Rodney's father. I know my father. Uh, but I, I'm a I, I am taking the assumption that we had positive memories or interactions with our fathers. So we, a lot of us kind of gloss over that and understanding what it means to have a, a father in heaven. And we're going to look at that uh, a little bit uh, in, in Luke 11. But I didn't come to the realization of how important that first line was until I started doing prison ministry. And, and the reason that that first line is so important uh, to some men, because I, I, like I said, I took it for granted. I, my father wasn't perfect, but I know that, that he, he loved me. He did his best to uh, take care of me and, and my brother and my mother. Uh, but about 90, 95% of the men that we ministered to in, uh, in the state penitentiary when I was there did not have fathers present in their lives they didn't understand what a father was they didn't understand what what the purpose of their father was and the sad thing is is that many of them that were incarcerated were fathers themselves and had never seen their children hmm. or or well, i'll say a lot of them hadn't been able to interact with their children in a way that their children could interact back. They were infants when they, they were incarcerated and some of them will never see their children. And so when in, in prison ministry, when we offer, when we offered this prayer, uh, it took on a, a new, a, a new meaning or a, a new foundation for me when I realized that these men that God was the first father that they had ever encountered in their lives. And, and it was, and it was always important and it impressed upon me whenever we would, whenever they would pray this prayer, it wasn't us, but whenever we would pray or we would ask them to pray, they would pray this prayer and they would start out to the group asking a question. They would say, whose father? And then everyone would answer, our Father, who art in heaven. And, and as they did this, so for, for us, we, can't, we need to make sure that we're not overlooking the part that we have a Father in heaven who loves us, who wants a relationship with us. He wanted a relationship with us so badly that he sent his only son uh, to earth uh, to die for our sins so that we could be reconciled and have that relationship with him uh, for all eternity. And it says in the, in the uh, lesson here that one of the things that Jesus teaches his disciples to pray, the first thing he tells them to do is recall God's glory and holiness, uh, that he would be honored and holy, honored as holy, and God's kingdom is his will, uh, will reflect his glory and, and holiness are on Jesus's mind at the foremost, uh, or should be the foremost of our thoughts as well. It says that the acknowledgement of glory of God, not because uh, uh, of our acknowledgement, because our prayers rely wholly on his glory. So uh, our prayers are dependent on his answer. Uh, that it's by his glory and his holiness that he answers our prayers in that. Anybody want to have a, or say anything or comment on that part of it before we, we go on to the next part of this? So we, so we are relying, so in that first line in verse nine, we're acknowledging God as our father. God is our sustainer. 
God is our, our mentor. God is our teacher. God is our, our provider. God is our protector. All the attributes that we can associate to a father, we put in a God. And again, like that's why I said, if you grew up without a father, uh, this prayer may be a, a little hard for you to understand, or that particular session may be hard to understand because you don't know what a father is. But then we look at verse 10, and, and this is just as important. It says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And I don't know if, any, if everyone heard uh, Rodney's uh, quote from Tony Evans. Can you repeat that again, Rodney? Because I'll mess it up. Yes, uh, he said it was earthly permission for heavenly intervention. Okay. In other words, because of our free will, uh, God expects us to ask our desires. Even, even Jesus, when he was walking by the pool of Bethesda, and the lame man was there. He said, do you want to be well? He didn't just wave his hand and make him well. He wanted him to say, I want to be well. Right. Which we know is not exactly what happened, but. Well, exactly. But he, he wants a response from us. And that's one of the things that, that we're going to. Let's take a minute here because we're going to be jumping, jumping over. Let's leave, read these other two scriptures and we'll tie all this in together. Uh, Luke 11, Luke 11, 9 through 13 says, so I ask you, ask and it will be given, seek and you will find, knock and the door will be open to you. For everyone who receives and the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks, the door will be open. What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And then in Luke 18, verses 1 through 8, it said, Now he told them a parable on the need for them to pray always and not to give up. There was a judge in a certain town who didn't fear God or respect people. And a widow in that town kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my adversary. For a while he was unwilling, but later he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or respect people, yet because this widow keeps pestering me, I will give her justice so that she doesn't wear me out by her persistent coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. Will not God grant justice to his elect who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay helping them? I tell you that he will swiftly grant them justice. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? And so I, that goes back in, uh, ties into what Rodney is saying is that our, our prayers, our faith requires action. Uh, you guys agree with that? It, it requires action on our part. Uh, God wants us to come to him as, as Rodney says, is that he doesn't force his will. He doesn't force his blessings. He doesn't force the things on us. He wants us to come to him with the requests of our lives. Now, That's right. when we come to him in verse 11, it says, give us our daily bread. Give us the things that we need to sustain ourselves. Uh, but uh, again, the verse for that, it, it should be in the forefront of our mind is that we are we should be aligned with him working for his will to be done here on earth. Mm -hmm. and, and if we are aligned in that way, then the things that sustain us will align with that uh, with that calling or with that plan uh, that he has put on us. You know, pastor talked about that, uh, touched on that a little bit today in his sermon. Uh, that because we are, we are 
his children, we are adopted, his adopted children, we can receive part of our heavenly inheritance while we're still here on earth. And yet we have a, we have congregations across the world that are filled with people that because they have garnered their salvation, they are sitting and waiting to die so they can receive their inheritance. And they don't realize they can get a portion of that uh, while they're still living. It's just a matter of they have to uh, seek it out. Now, no, I don't want to put words in pastor's mouth, but was that not basically what what you were getting at today? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir, it was. Um, and on, on top of that, sometimes we become angry with God and with others because he's not answering or he's not, we, we claim he's not listening to us uh, because we, we haven't asked specifically for something. You know, one of the, one of the things that I've heard people say is Lord bless people all over the world. Okay. You want him to bless them, but what do you want him to bless them with? How do you want him to bless them? Uh, are you asking for, for a cure for, for this uh, pandemic we're in? Or are you asking for a cure for cancer? What are you asking God to do? We do not specify. We put no, uh, no specification on what we are asking God to do, which puts us in a dilemma because when he doesn't do what we ask, it's not God's fault. It's, you know, a lot of times it's in the way you ask the question. I agree with that. And, and that kind of goes in with the next verse, forgive us of our debts yes. as we forgive our, our debtors. Uh, yeah. I know a lot of people, when, when it comes time to confess their sins, it's, uh, Lord, forgive me for whatever I did today. And... and you know that is a that is a very immature yes. uh, request. Yes, I used to uh, used to get that from my kids all the time when they would get in trouble, and I, I would have them apologize to the other person that they had a they had done something wrong to, and a lot of times what I would get is I'm sorry for whatever I did. Mm -hmm. Because they've done so much, they really didn't even remember exactly <laughs> what what it was that they did that time. Um, I want to I want to go somewhere with that. Don't ask God to bless you when you uh, or or to forgive you when you can't forgive others. Uh, we have to be specific in that as well. Um, we have to ask God to. To forgive us but we also have to ask him to give us the strength and give us the ability to wipe out and forget the the issues or the things that have happened to us by other people and to render them in a clean way as well that's not easy for a lot of people we're seeing that day in and day out now people are hard-hearted yeah. and if you are hard-hearted it's very hard for you to, 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 to get in direct communication with God because the hardness of your heart won't let you go through. God is love. Yep. And you, 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 if, if you in your hard hearted state, you can be mad over, over what happened on your job, what's happening in your home, what's happening in your community, even in this nation. Don't get angry enough to sin but get angry enough to go to God and pray if we want real change in 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 our lives and in this nation we have to go to God we're trying to come up with results on our own to a godly problem a problem that only God can solve and because we're doing that we're doing more harm than good yeah. I'll also go with, go with this too. If somebody's watching this, either Facebook or YouTube, because right, I hear this a lot. Well, I forgive them, but I'm not going to forget what they did. <laughs> well, let me tell you something. 
if you're not going to forget what they did, you ain't forgiving them. Yeah. Uh, that's not forgiveness. You know, uh, thank, thank God uh, he doesn't do that to us. Yes. But, but scripture says that once we confess our sins, he is faithful to forgive us and cast our sins as far as the east is from the west. And we've talked yes. about this before. Mm -hmm. uh, he didn't say north to south. He said east to west because there, there is no ending. Once you go east, you're always going east in mm -hmm. the same way around. So uh, when it says that we need to forgive our, forgive our debts as we forgive our, our debtors as well, it means that we need to have the same forgiveness. And you're right, that is hard. And, and uh, again, I think we look at it in the wrong perspective in the fact that it's something that we can do. Uh, on our mm -hmm. own strength mm -hmm. and, and I'm sorry I, maybe it's just me because uh, I'm a hateful person uh, but without Jesus's intervention uh, in my life and in that particular aspect Jesus has to help me forgive people because yes. I want to I want to hold a grudge mm -hmm. I want vengeance mm -hmm. uh, I want uh, uh, reparations Mm -hmm. uh, that's the other thing that, that we that we uh, that we uh, get caught up in the fact that we forgive somebody with the expectation that they're going to show gratitude for us forgiving them. <laughs> yeah. And then we get mad when they don't. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And this this also falls into another category here. I'm, I want to go back to where we were on Wednesday night. We, 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 we did a really good job of presenting the situation or the dilemma that we're in as we deal with, with the warfare that we're going through, you know, at this particular time. But the, the truth of the matter is, is even as we're going through this warfare and we're dealing with it, we have to present a solution. And that solution is a direct communication with God over what we're dealing with, a direct communication, a, a, a direct way of, 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 of coming to a, a, a conclusion that will be a blessing to those that are around us as well as ourselves. And we cannot do that on our own. And that, that's something that I think we miss a lot as well. I agree. One of the things, uh, and then of course the last section, and then we'll we'll kind of go back over this again. But it says, "Do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one." Um, you know, James tells us that that, uh, and it's misquoted a lot of times, but uh, paraphrasing that God will never uh, allow us to be tempted more uh, than we can handle, or without giving us a, an out. Uh, that he will never allow us to be tempted uh, to a point where there, where we get trapped and there's no way out to do it, that he will always offer us an escape, an escape uh, situation or an escape plan. The problem that we have is a lot of times we don't want to take the escape area. No, uh, because, uh, because it's going to be too much work or it's going to be too inconvenient. Or it's going to cause us to do something that we don't want to do. Well, there's one more thing that goes with that. A lot of times we don't want the escape plan because we like the sin that we're doing. Well, that's true too. Sin is awful fun. For in the beginning, yeah, in the beginning, and and that to me it is it is where it hits <laughs> the most. You, you see people who like what they're doing. Uh, well, this is my personal little sin. I keep it right here in my pocket with me, and I'm not bothering anybody with it. But th the thing of it is, is you're not allowing the full use of the Holy Spirit upon you. You're not allowing the full power and presence to fall upon you because you keep holding back this little sin that you think nobody else knows about, but God knows all. So does that not render our prayer life ineffective many times? 
it does. And, and we taught, well, when I was teaching teens, I got this a lot uh, as far as, uh, you know, our, 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 I don't know if it's this generation. I know, I know it's part of the, this generation. I don't know how far it goes back, uh, but we're brought up with the understanding, almost the idea that as long as we don't get caught, we're okay. Mm -hmm. uh, as long as we don't get caught, it's okay. So as long as you don't get caught cheating on a test, it's okay. As long as you don't get caught cheating in a relationship, it's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the problem comes when you, when you get found out. Mm -hmm. And so when we're talking about sin and, and character and how we act uh, when we're away from people, especially with young people, and, and I kind of use the, the example that uh, had them go through their daily routine and what they do in their bedrooms or what they, what kind of TV they watch or what kind of YouTube videos they watch and say, if the pastor of the church was sitting next to you, would you watch those videos? <laughs> and they kind of smirk and say, well, no. And then you say, well, you know, Jesus is right there with you looking over yeah. your shoulder. Right. Mm -hmm. And then they had a, they had this deer in the headlights moment as they kind of process that mm -hmm. and then this look of fear uh, that they've been caught because mm -hmm. they, they don't think of it that way. Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I think that's, a, that's a, that's a lot how we do too. Out of sight, out of mind. Mm -hmm. And a, a lot of times when we pray, uh, we our, our prayers, we're expecting it to be almost like a genie in a bottle. Uh, the only time we pray is when we need something. Right. Yeah. And that's not what we're told here. But no. verse 13, or Luke 11, verse 13, I think is very important for us too. Uh, the, the last part of that, and it talks about if we who are eagle give good gifts to our children, how much more would the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Oh, yes. and, and so his greatest gift to us is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the, the Holy Spirit for, for just a little bit for uh, possibly those who are watching who don't understand what the Holy Spirit is or what the importance of the Holy Spirit. Why would the Holy Spirit, why would Luke or why would Jesus put this in there in, in Luke that the Holy Spirit is the, is the best gift uh, that anyone could receive. Anybody else want to answer that or, or take a stab at it? Well, I think if you're going, if God is going to give you the Holy Spirit, and that is the gift that he is giving, when you look back up there at the first part in verse 9, and it says asking you it shall be given to you see you know knocking you will open seeking you will find what are you looking for what are you asking for well jesus is saying the first thing you need to be asking for is the holy spirit because from there on with the holy spirit guiding you you're going to know what to ask for you're going to know what to seek for and you're know you're going to know what to go after yeah i was looking up uh Well, let's let's go back and 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 review what what Jesus said. Jesus said, uh, "Tarry here, and I will send you a Comforter." Let 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 me say this: there are many times that we cause ourselves more distress, more heartache and pain than we have to because we're listening to ourselves instead of listening and obeying the Spirit of God. There are so many steps that we go, that we take that uh, we wouldn't have to take if we would only listen and obey what the Spirit is telling us. I can think of many occasions when there was a voice telling me, look, do this, but I wouldn't listen. But I thank and praise God for the times that I did listen. 
and the difference that it's made. Uh, for many of you all, you, you, you may have thought that this was a coincidence, but have you ever been traveling down one of those country roads and you're getting ready to go around the curve and something tells you that there's an Amish buggy just around the corner or just around the curve? You, you didn't listen and you sped around the curve and sure enough, there was the buggy. Or, and you had to put on your brakes and come to a screeching halt. Or have there been times that you actually thought that this was going to happen because of, of what this, this feeling that you had or this thing that come into your mind and sure enough, when you went around the curve, you were already going slow enough that all you had to do was slow down and, 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 and everything was good. Those are the kind of things that, that we take for granted that the Spirit of God provides for us when we are in close connection with Him on a daily basis. Uh, you, you mentioned uh, only praying that one prayer and praying once a day. Listen, you and I both know that our prayer life, our prayer should not be repetitious once we become a rooted and ground Christian, our, just as our life changes daily, our prayer should change with our life. You don't have the same issues on today that you had on yesterday. Whatever it is that you are dealing with, take that issue to God. If there's something that you want done or taken care of, be specific. Right. And remember, remember, it says our daily bread. Remember that whatever you're doing and whatever you're asking him to do is for today. Tomorrow's not here and it is not promised. But let's get through today and make our way. Right. A couple of things uh, in, in that. One of the things I want to uh, mention, too, uh, uh, not to discount this prayer. Uh, the principles of the, not necessarily that Jesus is saying that he said, you should pray like this. He didn't say you should pray this, but he, you should pray like this. So there are, are principles uh, in, in the prayer that we need to pray every day. And we need to pray multiple times a day. Uh, we, we need to recognize uh, again, that God is holy and it's through his grace that we receive anything from him at all. Uh, we should be looking to uh, further the kingdom of God while we're here on earth. We, we should ask him to sustain us and get us through that day, whatever the needs of that day is. And like you said, be specific on what you need. The answer may come back no or not right now, but you need to be specific in the, in the needs that you have in your life with him. He knows what you need, Yes, uh, but he wants to hear it from you. Yes. Ask for strength to be forgiving, to, to show grace and mercy to other people. We, we forget the, the two commandments that Jesus gave us that we need to follow is love God with everything you got and love people as yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can't love people with your own strength. If you don't have Jesus Christ in you, you can't love people uh, the way that, that we're commanded to love people. So we have to have his strength and his intercession in our lives to be able to do that. And then the last one, of course, mm -hmm. or the last part of that, the principle is to help us to stay away from temptation. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to tie this in since you were in Romans 8 earlier today uh, to back up and go through Romans 8, 26 and 27. Mm -hmm. And it says in the same way, the spirit helps us in our weakness. Yes. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Mm -hmm. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the spirit because the spirit intercedes for God's people in accordance with the will of, uh, in the will of God. Mm -hmm. and so again, that, that reinforces uh, Luke eleven thirteen why the Holy Spirit in our lives is so important for our prayer life. Mm -hmm. um, is because uh, not only is he's the, he's the counselor, he's the comforter, uh, but he is almost, I guess, the, the interpreter uh, mm -hmm. to, to help get from what we're saying in, in our in our infantile state uh, to the glory and majesty of God that he could understand what we need. Does that make sense? To... 
Does anybody else have any want to comment on that? Well, it, it you you hit the nail right there. The what I want to to say though is this: every one of us have fallen short in one way or another. The sweet part. Um, on uh, Romans 8 today was the very first verse mm. of Romans 8. There's no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. Do you realize how powerful that really is? It, it's, now, I want everybody to understand this. Just because you're a baptized believer in Jesus, and the statement is made that there's no condemnation. This does not give you a lawful right to go out and just live any kind of way and do anything. But when we go through our daily lives and we're asking God to lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, there's sometimes that we are a little slow about getting delivered out of evil. Out of evil. And in those times that, that we fall short and we go to God and we confess our sin, he's faithful to restore us. And I'm, I'm, I have to be restored daily. I, you know, I'm, I'm an old man and I still have to be restored. So I want my young people to understand this. We go through a process of restoration on a daily basis. I'm restored, I'm renewed every day of my existence and uh, you know some folks don't get that and that's another thing that the that the, the jews were trying to throw throw on the uh, new christian gentiles you've messed up you sin you've broken the law you didn't follow everything to the t well what they didn't tell them was they can't follow everything to the t as well the law was given to detect sin in our lives. It had a purpose. But also the Holy Spirit, the blood of Jesus was given to defeat sin in our lives. The law can only detect it and Jesus is the only one that can defeat it. Mm -hmm. And we have to bear that on a daily basis. Now, uh, I'll touch it. Touch one of the important parts of uh, of uh, Romans eight one two is no condemnation, and that's one of the things that we that that in our uh, support group, our addiction group that that I uh, that I'm in that uh, is freedom from that condemnation. So we're looking at we're looking at a freedom of the addiction, but we're also part of the the harder part. The addiction part can be easy to do. We can stop doing that, or we can overcome that. Uh, overcoming the guilt and the shame of past transgressions is what holds a lot of people yes. back from actually receiving yes. uh, the blessings and the freedom uh, that we're seeking. And so it's the understanding that the, the condemnation is about uh, the sins of our past. It doesn't, it's not about our, the sins of our future. Like you said, it's not giving us a free ticket to go out and live our lives in any way. But it, to me, reading that verse, it, it absolves us and takes away the guilt and the uh, penalty of the sins that we have performed in the past. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And Paul talks about that several times. It makes it a point that you cannot move forward uh, if you're looking at your past. And he, above all people, uh, I had to struggle with that. Uh, we don't think about that. You know, he was in prison. We talk about him being in prison and how hard that was. How hard, it, how hard do you think it would be being a converted Christian looking back at his hand in, in the stoning of Stephen, mm -hmm. at, at, the, uh, at, at the imprisonment of all the Christians, of the other stonings, the executions that he took part in or helped perpetrate as a Christian now himself? Uh, that if he had dwelled on the actions of his past life uh, before his new creation, he would never have been able to move forward and produce 
exactly. uh, what we have in the Bible now. Yes, exactly, exactly. And and don't you know? I didn't get to say this this morning, but it takes a real sinner to know how to help another sinner. Absolutely. I, I missed that this morning, y'all. I'm sorry. It was in my notes. I, I just got excited. That's all right. But it, you, you, Paul was, Paul said he was chief of sinners. He said he had his license. But if he can overcome his past, you and I can overcome ours as well. And I'm not just saying that to us four. I'm saying that to whoever may be listening or may ever see this rebroadcast. Whatever you dealt with, whatever you're going through with, you can't. And and ain't nothing no worse than hearing folks brag about their sin. Listen, I lament everything that I've ever done that's wrong. But I know I'm free from it. And that's not a burden. And because I have that freedom, I'm able to witness because he freedom will give you the power that you need to tell others. That's right. And I think we missed that. That's why we as Christians slurk back into the corner and, and, and don't witness and don't do what we need to do because we're still under the bonds of our past. Let it go. That's all you can do. You can't hold on to it. It ain't worth it. Let it go. No. And let God move in your life. We, we've come to the end of our, our lesson here or our time together. I, I appreciate it that you have joined us tonight. I apologize for the technical difficulties that we had on Facebook Live. Uh, hopefully, uh, again, if we didn't get your questions answered, uh, please drop us a line in that and we, we'd be happy again to uh, uh, go over those issues with you or those questions with you. I want to leave us on one statement or one uh, uh, doctrinal idea from the from the lesson before we leave tonight. Uh, again, we we do this uh, on Wednesday nights as well at 6:30 uh, p.m. Central Standard Time, and we would love to have you join our, our live discussion at that point. We'll be on Facebook Live at that at that as well. Uh, reminder: Also, we are having uh, in-house services now on Sundays at 10:30 at the Community Church at Cedar Springs. We're located at 8825 Brownsville Road in Brownsville, Kentucky. If you're in the area, we'd love to have you stop by and say hello to us and uh, visit us for a while. Uh, on a personal note, we do a, a, my, the New Believers Sunday School class is on Facebook Live every Sunday morning at 7 a.m. Uh, you're welcome to come there. If you follow us on our Facebook page, uh, you can have access to the, uh, the past lessons on that. If you go to our video section uh, on our page, it should have all the uh, Facebook lives for our, our, our services, our, our Sunday school classes, and our Bible studies uh, listed there. So you can catch up on lessons that you've missed if you want to go there. The last doctrinal uh, understanding that, that the lesson has that I wanted to go on is the importance of, of prayer and providence to an to an omnipotent God. And it's, if God is in control and already knows the future, why should we pray? And the Bible teaches that all, although God has a plan for this world that he promises to fulfill, prayer is often the means God uses to accomplish his divine purpose. Even though God knows the end result, the means that lead to that end result will be accomplished through prayer. In this sense, it is true that a prayer changes things. And it is also true that God uses prayer to change our hearts so that our will comes into conformity with his. And so even though that, that we look at that God, all the power, we don't have any power ourselves uh, in the prayer, that everything comes from God, there is still power in prayer. We've seen power in prayer. Uh, as we start our prayer requests in that, I, I want us to, I want to start out with a praise for that. 
uh, several weeks ago, I mentioned a, a friend of ours who was uh, who had been on the list for about four or five years for a double lung transplant. Uh, and as uh, she finally uh, got on, or they found a pair of lungs that were compatible, uh, she went down to Nashville to have the, the surgery done. They did the COVID test as part of the new procedures, and she tested positive for COVID with needing a double lung transplant. Thank God that she recovered from COVID. She had her surgery Thursday, and she is recuperating and recovering and doing very well. And she had posted a, a message on Facebook uh, expressing uh, as a testimony, the power of prayer that she knew uh, that people were praying for her. And it was through those prayers uh, that brought her through and, and allowed her to uh, survive. Uh, to And now she is with a new lease on life, looking at serving God uh, even more because she knows, uh, just as I do, <laughs> the only reason I'm waking up every morning is because he's got a plan in my life. Yeah. I, I should have died five years ago. Uh, without a doubt, the doctors say I should have died five years ago, but uh, because of prayer and because of, of a purpose and a calling on my life that he has, uh, mm -hmm. I'm still here. Yes, so yes. so we'll, we'll turn over the other prayer requests to uh, to everybody else. So, Amen. I don't want to hog the whole thing up, but... Uh, <laughs> well. A friend of mine who had a child who lost a uh, lost his left hand and had his leg seriously mangled in an accident. Uh, his three-year-old daughter was attacked by a dog last week and had 26 stitches in her faces in her face. Uh, so she is recovering. He's asked prayer for that. Uh, he said that he is ready for 2020 to be over. Uh, that uh, he doesn't know how much more uh, he can take. But he says, you know, that uh, his, his family is rooted in, in Christ, uh, that, that he knows that the power of prayer will see them through, uh, and that he is, God has been good to him, uh, but he is requesting prayer for, for his daughter's healing. Amen. 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 Anybody else got anything? Pastor, I have a couple. Um, I was on the phone with Misty Dordery, a friend of mine, just before this started, and uh, she has a sister that's ha that's scheduled for a C-section. Her name is Mandy. It's scheduled on July the 30th, and uh, she is at a very high risk during this uh, C-section and is expecting a longer than usual recovery, so Misty's asking mm -hmm. prayer for her. And then also, uh, Wilma, Rodney's mom, has surgery on Thursday. Amen. Okay. Ransom, do you have anything? Just waiting on uh, results of some suspicious areas that the docs found when they were wandering around. We're just waiting for those to come back, see what the test results say. Amen. Amen. I, again, I ask for prayer for the McKissick family uh, as they are recovering from the virus. Uh, I ask for prayer for the um, Barnett family, my 92-year-old cousin who passed away and asking prayer for her 11 living children and their descendants. Uh, just asking prayer for our church as well as many, many other churches, praying for pastors, praying that God would strengthen them and would be in their midst, praying for our school system, Lord have mercy. School systems throughout the states and they're opening back up um, and, and how they're gonna do it. Uh, praying for those students and, and faculty, and, and uh, uh, you know, I've, I've I've seen them do great works, you know, last fall or last winter and last spring. So all I can say is carry on, and uh, we're gonna keep lifting them up. Um, I'm praying for for people to be healed from this virus everywhere. Uh, those that are in the hospitals. And, nursing home facilities, or wherever they may be, if they're convalescing at home, we lift them up. And uh, those are, are, are my thoughts and my prayer request. And um, I'm going to ask Ransom if he would to pray us out. All right. Well, join with me together. 
Gracious Father, we are just so grateful that we have a chance to come sit at your feet and have time to have a conversation with you, that we can bring our praises to you, that we can bring our hurts and the things that we need healing for. God, we just are so grateful that you sit, you're patient, and you hear us. And so, Father, give us the faith to know that as we have lifted up these prayer requests for healing and for comfort during the passing of others, that, uh, God, that you would give us the faith to understand that as we ask and we seek and we knock, the answers that you have for us have already been answered in your will. And that we have confidence in knowing that what we are asking for has been accomplished according to the way your plan has had it. And that uh, we would have our faith bring us into that realization and that uh, place of peace because of that. And we just continue to lift up all of those requests that are going on in the hearts of individuals that uh, just can't even put words to uh, the hurt. Uh, a son who's lost a hand and, and gets foot and then a daughter that gets attacked. God, I just pray that uh, the overwhelming feeling that uh, folks are having like that, that just seem to be can't get up for being knocked right back down again that God, that you are there, that you are lifting them up every single time we call out to you and we call out to you in prayer right now. And we call out to you in our daily lives. And so as we finish up this time together, that we would be able to say, God, your will be done as it is in heaven, perfectly in heaven, that you would bring that about in the places where we live and we can see your perfect will at work in our lives. And then we would be able to give you the honor and the praise and we pray it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sir. <clears throat> well, good night. <laughs>